Good day, Bazalwane. My name is Nuktula Kongo, and welcome to day two of our alignment conference. Uh, before we go into our declarations, I would just like to thank our pastors and leadership for this opportunity to just lead in the declarations. So we are now going to just declare alignment over all spheres of our lives. So let us begin. Alignment declarations for 2020. We declare that 2020 is our season of alignment in Jesus' name. We declare that South Africa is a blessed and God-fearing nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare a revival and a hunger and a thirst for righteousness to fill this land in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that our continent, our nation is aligned to God's will and we experience restoration in Jesus' mighty name. We declare that our pastors and leaders operate in a new order of God's wisdom. They are obedient to God's word the and the leading of the Holy Spirit. We declare that God's purpose and vision for this church is being fulfilled with speed. Lives are transformed, communities are impacted, and God's kingdom is advancing on earth in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We declare a perpetual, massive harvest of souls in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We declare that we are a church of champions, prayer saturated, firmly established in God's word. We declare that we are a church aligned with God's will. Therefore, he hears us according to 1 John 5, 14. Our children are aligned to God's will. Our marriages are aligned to God's will. We walk in, the, we walk in his counsel. Therefore, our destinies are aligned to his purpose. We are addicted lovers and doers of the word of God. We walk in the spirit and bear fruits of the spirit. Flesh has no power over us in the mighty name of Jesus. In 2020, we declare total alignment with the will of God in all spheres of our lives, in our families, in our relationships, in our businesses and careers. We are perfected in Jesus' name. We experience healing as we align ourselves with God's promises concerning our health. We experience peace as we meditate and confess and do the word of God. We are taught of the Lord and the spirit leads, or leads, our, leads our lives in all levels. We thank you, mighty God. We see the goodness of the Lord in, our la in the land of the living, according to Psalm 27 verse 3. We declare that the spirit of light and salvation and the fear of the Lord is our portion in the name of Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus' name. I am God's elect. I am God's masterpiece, his workmanship of grace and love. I am God's eternal excellence. I am blessed and highly favored. I am what the word of God says I am. I have what the word of God says I have. And I can do what the word of God says I can do. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. I have declared it and it is established in Jesus' name. We thank you, sisters. We thank you, everybody. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you, Father.
what he said he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you cause he
Good evening, Bazalwane. Ngan Bingele Lange Kamalum Filiwe to Uchesu Christu. My name is Mbali Rameti, and I would like to welcome you back to the Alignment Online Conference 2020. A special warm HOD welcome to our very first viewers. This is one divine appointment you'll be glad you didn't miss. We had an amazing time this morning with praise, worship, the word, and aligned cooking with Siba. Please invite your friends and family to the House of Destiny platforms on Facebook as well as YouTube as tonight's program takes us through spiritual alignment with Pastor Shola David Boha. Stay tuned as we kick off our program with sisters sharing on how alignment is perfecting all which concerns us. Our next special guest is Pastor Shola David Bora. Pastor Shola is the Chief Executive for Africa Regions in Standard Bank Group, responsible for the group's 19 markets in Africa, outside South Africa. Previously, she was the Chief Executive of Stanbeck IBTC Holdings PLC, a full-spectrum financial services holding company. Prior to that, she was the Chief Executive of Stanbeck IBTC Bank PLC, after holding various executive positions in corporate banking, corporate and investment banking, and investment banking coverage for Africa. Pastor Shola is an independent, non-executive director of Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company and is the chairperson of the Private Investors for Africa, a business coalition of ethically like-minded companies that seeks to improve the business climate on the African continent. Her executive educational experience includes the Advanced Management Program of Harvard Business School and the Global CEO Program of CEIBS, Wharton and IESE. She's an honorary senior member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria and was the winner of the CNBC African Woman of the Year Award for 2016. Among the many hats that she wears, She's a devoted wife and loving mother. Sisters, please welcome Pastor Shola. Well, good morning, uh, or rather good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, we are connected from South Africa all the way to London. That's the beauty of the virtual platforms. We are able to connect with the entire world. And we have Pastor Shola David Bora, who's going to minister a word in season regarding alignment. I, have, I hope you have your pen and your papers ready and we are going to glean the wisdom that she has. And I'm going to give over to you, Pastor Shola, over to you. Thank you for being with us on the ABC, the, the Alignment uh, Virtual Conference 2020. Welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Zama. And thank you, um, Pastor Musa, for inviting me to share with the Destiny Sisters at this Alignment Conference. Um, can we share a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for a time such as this that we can hear from you. We pray, Lord, that even as you speak to us, that you will give us the grace to align our lives to your will, that your purpose will be fulfilled and your kingdom established on earth yeah. in jesus name amen. amen amen i'm really excited about the topic alignment and also the scripture verse um, that anchors the topic matthew 18 18 to 20. if you will permit me i will read it verily i say unto you whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There are three phases that I would like to bring out from that reading. The first phrase is, you shall agree. You shall agree. 
The second phrase is gathered together, gathered together. That is, you come together in unity. And the third phrase is in my name. That is in the name of Jesus. We have to be aligned in the name of Jesus. And John chapter one, verse 14, tells us that the word became flesh. So Jesus and his word are one, and we must align to the word of God. So agreement comes first, followed by unity, and then alignment. You cannot have alignment without unity. You cannot have unity without agreement. For example, when a man and a woman agree to marry, the agreement comes first. Then they are united as husband and wife, after which they align their marriage to the word of God, which is Christ and his church. And even in my career, I have found that when there are challenges, when there are issues, you must first have agreement. You must bring all the parties, all the stakeholders together to discuss what the issues are. And with understanding, they can then align. So when you have agreement, unity and alignment, there is nothing you cannot do. Remember the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, 6. It says, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do because they were in agreement, they were united, they were aligned, you know, which is why God, you know, um, gave them different tongues and, and they were scattered. So once there is agreement, unity and alignment with the word of God, the power of God has free reign in our lives to accomplish his purpose and to do signs and wonders. Alignment to the word of God is the compass for our lives. It is the anchor for our souls. Jesus described it like building your house on a rock. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. He says, if you do what I say, if you obey my word, it's like you built your house on the rock. So when the storm comes, it will not sweep you away. Every step we take based on the word of God helps to build our lives, helps to establish our lives. It is a sure step that moves us closer to God's purpose. And if we follow the example of Jesus when he walked upon the earth, Jesus fulfilled every word of prophecy that was written about him, every word. Read the gospels, he kept on repeating that it might be fulfilled. You know, he said, John the Baptist shall baptize him that it might be fulfilled. You know, he rode on a donkey that the word of God might be fulfilled, you know. So it's important for us to tailor our lives based on the word of God, to ensure that every decision we are taking is aligned with the word of God. On the day of Pentecost, and we can read that story in Acts chapter two, verse one to eight, the disciples were in one accord. They were in agreement, they were in unity, and the Holy Spirit came, the power of God came, and they began to speak in other tongues. And all the people could hear and understand in their own tongues. 
So that unity, that understanding came. The greatest person we can align with is the Holy Spirit. I always say, without the Holy Spirit, I can do nothing. And with the Holy Spirit, I can do everything. It was after the alignment with the Holy Spirit that the disciples were filled with boldness and could go about fulfilling their calling, their ministry. And you must remember that alignment is not a one-off event. It is continuous. It is something that we've got to do daily, step by step. That is why the psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 105 said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He didn't say it was a such light, you know, that could show you, you know, um, one kilometer ahead. It's a lamp that just tells you, where do I put my next step? You know, lights up my path little by little. So we have to keep on aligning every day. It's continuous, you know. And alignment requires commitment. When I first got married, you know the scripture that says, the two shall become one flesh. I thought it was automatic, that it just happened. But that's not the case. Any, any married couple will tell you. It's a journey. It's based on shared experiences of committing to the marriage. And gradually you begin to come together. In fact, the man of God was saying that in his view, you need at least 10 years before you can say you are really married. Because by that time, you will have experienced, you know, births, deaths, marriages, all kinds of things would have happened that would have helped you to become one. Beautiful. <laughs> so good. it's important that we align with the word of God. And there are so many benefits of alignment. I'll only mention three of them. The first is aligning your life to the word of God simplifies your life. Mm, are you facing a challenge? Are you confused? You don't know what to do? Yeah. There is a solution to your situation in the word of God. Yes. Psalm 119 verse 130, 119 verse 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So the word of God simplifies your life massively. Trust me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Secondly, alignment to the word of God brings peace to you even in the midst of the storm. As you're facing challenges, it brings peace to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when you know that you are where God wants you to be, when you know that you are honoring God, keeping his word, when the storm comes, you are at peace. So it helps build resilience. It helps keep you calm. Like Jesus said, you are building your house on the rock. And the third benefit is that alignment to the word of God will lead you into God's purpose and plan for your life. Because this alignment is not really about us, but it's about fulfilling God's purpose on earth. Look at it like God has a master plan and everybody has a role to play in this plan. It's important for us to align ourselves with the word of God so that we will know what exactly
how we fit into that plan. Mm -hmm. Jesus in John chapter 4, verse 34, said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Yeah. So he was clear about what his purpose was. And when you are clear about your purpose, first of all, you have fulfillment. You know that this is what God called me into the kingdom for. This is why I am saved. I can lay hold on that thing for which I was laid hold upon. And you continue to press, like the apostle Paul said, to press, looking onto Jesus, the altar, the author and finisher of your faith. So it is so important that we align our lives to the word of God. And you know, the most important alignment is when you actually give your life to Jesus. So if you've never ever given your life to Jesus, I urge you, please do so today. You have to be united with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's as easy as ABC. You acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, you believe that Jesus died for you and rose on the third day. And you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And you're a child of God. You're, a save. you're That's saved. Good. That's good. So the word for the season is align. And even as we align, we will enter into God's plan and purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful words. We receive that and we thank you very much for such an uh, inspiring, timely, and a wonderful word that we have uh, received, Pastor Shola. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for sharing a timely word. We truly are grateful and our lives are never going to be the same again having received this word. We embrace it, we receive it completely and fully. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think um, I will start with a couple of questions again. Uh, definitely, as it's often said, uh, it, will, it will take us a lifetime to recover from what you've just shared. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And as I said earlier, uh, our lives are the better because of this contribution. And it is often said that the secret of uh, men or women is hidden in their stories. Um, after having shared such a wonderful word, um, also uh, knowing some of uh, you know the information about Pastor Shola, uh, for the benefit of our viewers and those that have tuned into the service, we'll start it at a lighter note and uh, probably allow Pastor Shola a moment to share who is Pastor Shola David Bora. Um, what um, is, is it that she loves doing uh, with her hectic schedule? How does she uh, find time to relax, to enjoy, and uh, just uh, share basically part of what your background is, and then we'll get into much more interesting leadership uh, questions. Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, I'm a child of God. <laughs> I'm also a wife, um, a mother of two teenagers. I have a 15-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. I also have an adult stepson. Uh, I am a banker. I studied economics um, in university. Um, and I, I use my initials SDB to describe myself as saved, delivered, and blessed. Oh, wow. <laughs> lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. And um, and I mean, we will get into your hectic schedule. Uh, but when you are not traveling the world, uh, when we when when you're not uh, in the bank as a banker, uh, what is it that Pastor Shola uh, does to uh, relax? and just regain her energies. 
Well, I will answer that in two parts, pre-COVID and during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so pre-COVID, because I used to travel so much, at the weekends, all I wanted to do was rest and stay at home, you know, and that was mm -hmm. what I used to do. Now, during COVID, because, you know, <laughs> I've been working remotely, we've been at home, you know. So what I started doing was walking. You know, I found walking um, so um, therapeutic, you know, it cleared my head. I also turned it into a prayer walk, you know. Um, so walking like at least 30 minutes um, has been very helpful. And then I started taking golf lessons. I used to play many years ago, but I kind of, hadn't played for a long while. And I started, I resumed golf lessons. So that has really been helpful. So I think those are the things that I've done now under COVID, which, you know, actually um, I'm going to keep up these habits even after COVID because they really have been helpful. Now nah, that's awesome. Now nah, that's awesome. That's great. So we, we seeing a golfer in the making or the regaining of the <laughs> Of, yes. the, of the hidden talent <laughs> that was there. Now that's excellent. You know, Pastor Shola, you 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 know, looking through your resume, what we have uh, shared with our with our viewers, uh, it's such really an accomplished uh, child of God. It's an accomplished uh, someone who's delivered and someone who's a believer. I actually love we love that SDB. Uh, it's such a it's such a it's such a profound and a wonderful uh, way of describing one, uh, but we all know that uh, as it's also said that there's no star without a coach. So I'd like to just uh, give you an opportunity to share with us, you know, people that have played a critical role in your life, in your journey, particularly your academic or your career journey, and the people that really you have opened up your heart to speak to you and maybe why those individuals you have allowed to speak into your heart, into your life. Thank you. I mean, I'll first talk about the people that have played, you know, significant roles in my life and then maybe um, move on to talk about those who are speaking into my life. And, you know, in my personal life, my mother, she's 91 years old now, wow. has always been there for me. And um, even when she didn't have much, you know, she gave of what she had. Um, she loves, you know, me and all my siblings, um, you know, selflessly. And I've watched her face the challenges of life with courage, with dignity and with faith. And, you know, that has really been um, a great support for me. Um, in my career, uh, my former boss, um, when I was in Nigeria, um, Mr. Peterside has been a mentor. Um, he taught me professionalism, taught me how to make decisions based on facts, you know, and um, has really encouraged me in my career. When I think of my spiritual journey, um, my pastors, and I, I have three, I've had three pastors, you know, um, Pastor Tony Rapu, um, then the late Pastor Esko Umpon, and then Pastor I.D. Iluyomade. Um, my pastors have discipled me. They've taught me not to be afraid to give to the Lord, you know, taught me not to be afraid of fasting, you know, before, if you mention the fast, I'll panic, <laughs> you know, and um, they also taught me how to show the love of Christ in a practical manner, you know, so they played significant roles in my life. And when I think about those who continue to speak into my life, even today, um, and, you know, we thank God for the internet, which enables us to have access to so many great men and women of God. Um, I listen regularly to um, Pastor E. A. Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Um, also, Pastor I. D. Leomade um, of the City of David. Um, 
In the UK, I listen to um, Nikki Gumbel of Holy Trinity Brompton. And I have also learned from the late Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, so mm -hmm. there are many others, but, you know, these are people I, I, I regularly listen to um, that speak into my life and, and, and encourage me in my Christian walk. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is so profound and um, it's so great to know that um, really, as they say, that anything that is of greatness cannot be achieved solo. It's um, encouraging mm -hmm. to see your life surrounded by a community of such strong uh, people. So thank you for sharing that with us. My question is, um, I've heard and I've been coming around the statement that's been resonating within me, which says that we don't rise to the level of our goals, but we fall into the levels of our systems. Now, I'd like to know from you as a leader, what systems or what disciplines have you intentionally cultivated or developed to make sure that you grow yourself as a leader and stay on top and stay relevant and, and, and be influential as a leader? Thank you for that question. Um, I think first of all, I, I always try and make sure I, I'm guided by the word of God. I read the word of God. Mm. I try and read the word of God every day before I talk to any people. I say, I like God to speak to me first. <laughs> That's before good. I speak to others, you know, um, and I never ever forget where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was once an unemployed graduate looking for a job, you know, and um, I, I started working in a bank and God opened doors for me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and promoted me to where I am today. So maintaining an attitude of gratitude is, is, is really very important. Um, and um, one of the things I always do in terms of habits, I, I keep lists, <laughs> to-do lists all the time, um, sort of review the day ahead, um, all the things that I need to do and make sure that, you know, I get the important things done. And, you know, at the end of the day, I always review, you know, how was the day? What was I able to do, you know, but, you know, it's a daily walk and it's, and it's, it's grace. Um, you know, I am what I am by the grace of God and God releases his grace every day um, you know, to enable us to accomplish, you know, what we need to do for that day. Thank you. Wow. That's so, that's so excellent, Pastor Shola, you. you know, from being an unemployed graduate, which is, um, what is quite prevalent in our society this day. I know that someone is being encouraged by the fact that moving from being an unemployed graduate to be overseeing uh, 19 African markets for one of the Africa's leading financial institution, that's certainly, uh, that's certainly something to be, to, be, to, be, to be marveled at. And uh, again, anchoring it back to uh, God, the attitude of gratitude, that's really, really so encouraging. But in your walk, I mean, there's so much on your shoulders uh, around, as I said, 19 uh, critical markets in the continent that you are accountable for, that you look after. Uh, I mean, as a female uh, leader, uh, what are some of the best leadership advice, career that we have received along the way you know, which is, as I said, interesting from an unemployed graduate to being the chief executive of Africa regions, uh, looking after 19 uh, critical African markets. Okay, I'll talk about two of them. Um, the first is, is one that um, an elder in the church, he was talking to a group of us and he said, you know, that we must never ever forget that every job that we have, we are holding it in trust for God. Mm. We are custodians mm. and we're holding that job in trust for God. 
And I haven't forgotten that, that every assignment, every role I'm playing, I'm holding it in trust for God. The second um, advice I received was, you know, from a founder of, of a bank in Nigeria, uh, Mr. Diola, Fola Diola, and he was talking about succession. And he said that I must never ever promote anybody who I had any doubts about their sense of judgment mm. or any doubts about whether they would do the right thing, you know, in any situation. That if mm -hmm. I even had a little bit of doubt, I should never promote such a person. You can reward the person in other ways, give them a bonus, etc. But don't elevate people to positions of leadership unless you can 100% vouch for their integrity and knowing that this person will make the right decision and has the right sense of judgment because mm -hmm. you don't want to put the wrong person in charge of the lives and careers of many people or to expand you know, their sphere of influence. So you must be absolutely sure um, and, and I've kept that in mind. So if I'm in doubt, I wait, I watch, you know, um, you know, rather than take somebody, um, to a level that, um, you know, could create a challenge for the organization. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I mean, still within the arena of, uh, leadership, uh, you know, some of, I mean, we face a lot of, uh, uh, you know, barriers, we face a lot of challenges, and certainly, you know, from what you've said before, your language really anchored on God, you know, would you please just share some of the barriers that you've had, uh, that you've faced, and, 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 and how you've navigated those barriers uh, to be where you are, and some of them probably still facing now, and how do you uh, work through those barriers and challenges? In your career yeah so you know um not everybody will believe in you and um you just have to keep your eyes on the lord you know um you know when i was being considered for an executive director position uh, many years ago um some people thought it was too early for me um, and others didn't, you know, what you just have to keep in mind is that, you know, the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the East or from the West, you know, promotion comes from the Lord. Yeah. So you just focus on your job, on being professional, on adding value and irrespective of who thinks what, mm -hmm. you know, at the right time you will get what is due to you. And um, awesome. you've also got to make sure that um, you follow policy in everything you do. There are always gonna be challenges, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I remember at a time when, um, and I was chief executive of Stambik IBTC Holdings, and we faced a regulatory challenge you know, we got through it by making mm -hmm. sure we kept to our policy, um, we kept to the laws, we pursued our cases in court, you know, but we didn't do anything that was wrong. And that's yeah. so important, you know, because um, policy ultimately protects you, you know, in your career. Mm -hmm. And um, you should always ask when people come to you, what is the policy? What does the policy say about this? If the policy has been overtaken by events, then change the policy, mm -hmm. but don't go against the policy, you know, or, or make sure you go through the right way to get an exemption to a policy, you know, um, but keeping good governance is such an important part of facing challenges in your career. That's Thank awesome. You. That's awesome. That is beautiful. Um, and, um, 
you mentioned something which was um, there's there's so much truth in it, but it's also a a funny side of of the marriage when you said you should never call yourself married until you are in it for at least ten years, and um, you were sharing um, on the gradual process that alignment is an online ongoing commitment. So. Um, I feel that that is a word that really our young people um, need to hear and um, the gradual, the process mm -hmm. aspect of, of, of alignment. And I love that. And I just need, if you uh, would please, uh, now that you are married for uh, more than 10 years, if you could speak and give one word of advice to a young couple um, the things that you wish probably you had known um, just so that they are able to mm -hmm. navigate and lead their family front better. Yeah, so you know, marriage is spiritual. It is God's idea, it's not man's idea. Mm -hmm. And aligning yourself to God's word concerning marriage is the key to a successful marriage. Amen. Amen. And I always tell married couples that you can never pass an exam by looking at somebody else's paper. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. You understand? Yeah. So God is the one that has set the exam. The exam for the husband is love your wife as Christ loved the church. I'd like you to repeat that, please. <laughs> love your wife as Christ loved the church. The exam for the woman is that you should submit yourself to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Now, if you are looking at your spouse's exam paper, you're going to fail. You focus on your exam and making sure you pass your exam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Women, women, including myself, we submit to everybody else but our own husband. Wow. The Bible says submit to your own husband. If our pastor tells us to do something, we say, yes, pastor. <laughs> if our boss tells us to do something, we say, Yes, boss. If our husband says do something, we say why? Wow. Mm. You know, well, you know, and you know, we're saying it innocently and genuinely, but you know, why you, you know, why dear? Shouldn't we do something else? The Bible says submit to your own husband, not to somebody else's husband, you know. <laughs> and the other thing I um I have come to learn is you know, the same way you have the office of the president. Now, irrespective of who is sitting in that office, whether you like the president or you don't mm -hmm. like the president, mm -hmm. there is a protocol around that office. You have to, you know, when the president comes into a room, everybody stands up. You know, there are protocols around it. Now, there is an office of the husband. Mm -hmm irrespective of who is sitting in that office you have to give the office of the husband the honor god wants you to give that office and as you do so god sees you he sees you're honoring his word and he sorts you out anything you are believing him for you know your requests he deals with those situations. Mm -hmm. but the most important thing in marriage is align your marriage to the word of God. It's not about how you feel. It's not about, you know, um, who is right or who is wrong. Just what does the word of God say about this situation? And obviously, you know, there are some marriages that are in a difficult state and one has to keep on praying. Um, if it is a state that you know, could be a life-threatening matter, of course, you know, it might be wise for a season to remove yourself from a life-threatening um, situation. Yeah. But ultimately, 
if you map that marriage on the one who created marriage, it's your best chance for success. Thank you. Wow, that's lovely. That's lovely, Pastor Shella. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I mean, as we go towards the close of our conversation, you know, I wish we could have much more time, uh, two or three couple of questions, and then we'll close. Uh, but in your journey uh, as a leader, in your journey, uh, you know, spiritually, uh, in your journey as a, as, a, as, as a wife, as you had mentioned, as a parent, what are some of the, you know, verses that have truly kept you going or that stand out for you, as well as maybe some of the affirmations that continuously uh, kind of stay on with you as you go through your day-to-day -day, uh, activities? Um, one of my favorite verses is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things mm. through Christ who strengthens me. And, you know, anytime I have faced a challenge or a situation that I thought was overwhelming, I remind myself that it's not about me. Mm. It's about doing this or facing this challenge through Christ. And he would strengthen me. Uh, my favorite affirmation is thank you Jesus when things are going well thank you Jesus when things are not going well thank you Jesus when you don't know what to do thank you Jesus why because you know when Jesus went to the cross he gave us victory yeah and no matter what it is mm. that we are going through the fact that Jesus died for us, he shed his blood for us, he rose again on the third day, he has given us victory. We must know that we will go through this situation, no matter how dark it is. I remember when my sister lost her 20-year-old son mm -hmm. several years ago, and she was almost losing her mind, mm. you know? I kept on telling her, just keep on saying, thank you, Jesus, you know, and mm -hmm. her testimony was that those words helped to calm her down. Those words brought her comfort. Those words strengthened her. So I always say, thank you, Jesus, no matter what the situation is. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's great. That's great. Well, um, just the, the, the two final um, uh, questions from my end. Uh, number one, I would like to find out what is your why. And then secondly, I would like you to just say one thing to that young girl who is growing up in the village with nothing with no aunt that is a doctor or professor or a CEO to look up to or to speak to her. And I'd like you to speak to her so that she also creates this dream within her and believe that one day maybe she can be like a Pastor Shola. So I'll start with the first question. What is my why? The Lord has placed in my heart a love for Africa. My heart belongs to Africa. Mm. And um, anything that has to do with the development of our continent, um, strengthening leadership on the continent, um, improving good governance on the continent, you know, I have a passion for, and I am led to help people, you know, realize their leadership potential and to enable um, good governance to be mm -hmm. established, you know, so that, you know, countries, organizations, people, we can do the right things in mm -hmm. the right way always. And ultimately, 
um, help Africa realize its true potential. To the young girl that is listening to this, I'd like to remind you that it was 12 unlearned fishermen that took the gospel mm. to the world. Mm. And you know, because they had been with Jesus, the Bible says that mm. Mm. because they had been with Jesus, yeah. they were looked on as very special people. So the very first thing you have to understand is Jesus loves you. He loves you unconditionally. And you have to trust Jesus. You have to give your life to Jesus. You have to put your hand in Jesus's hand and continue your journey of life, walking with him and letting him lead you. And as you do so, you will be amazed that he will take you higher and higher. He will open doors that you never thought were possible. Wow. He will make a way for you where you thought there was no way. He will send you destiny helpers. Mm. And after a while, people will look at you and they will not believe that you were the same person. And the only reason is because you were with Jesus. Mm. So please give your life to Jesus. You will never, ever regret it. Wow, Pastor Shola. You know, this has been such an incredible, uh, life-changing yeah. uh, conversation. Not only that, but the words that you shared before and we are grateful for that thank you for making the time and i know that a number and many uh, young and old women and men alike uh, destiny sisters and everyone who has tuned in uh, has been has received this word has received the, the wisdom that you've shared yeah. has been encouraged by your story and not only just knowing how you got into where you are today but knowing that your life is anchored on the word of God and knowing that sold out a life that is sold out to Jesus, uh, that Jesus begins to open doors that one would not have thought could possibly be open. So thank you for sharing the time with us. We are grateful. I'll just close in the word of prayer and also just then after give you one or, 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 or give you an opportunity to just share uh, one last thought as we as we close this conversation. Shall we bow our head? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for such a wonderful opportunity to receive your living word. Yeah. Our lives, Heavenly Father, have been impacted. Our lives have been changed. And we are grateful, Heavenly God, to have learned uh, or from Pastor Shola on all that which you are doing through her life. We thank you that she is blessed. We thank you that you continue to increase her territory. We thank Heavenly Father that people have had to come to know you as their Lord and personal Savior as a result of this conversation. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. It is in the name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. I'd like to just round up by saying God bless you. And my prayer for you and the entire church, the House of Destiny Family Church, is that the God of peace will sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank Receive you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
it would be an error for us not to give anyone an opportunity to say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. After having received such a wonderful word and such an inspiring, wonderful conversation, if someone says, Pastor, please pray with me so that I can surrender the ownership of my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it would be an honor and a privilege for us to pray together with you so that you can have him as your personal Lord and Savior. If that is you, please pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I give my heart and my life to you. I surrender the ownership of my life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I agree that I am a sinner and I need Jesus to save my life from all of my sins. I give my heart and my life to you and I decree, I declare that my name is written in the book of life. From this moment onward, I am the child of God. From this moment onward, I will live a life that is pleasing to you, Heavenly Father. I give you praise and I give you glory. It is in the name of Jesus I have prayed. Amen and amen. If that was you who prayed to this prayer, please reach out to us so that we can help you understand what it means to accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Contact us on the details below so that we can help you. But you have made a great decision in aligning your life with the purposes of God for all that which he has for you. And from this moment onward, I am so confident that your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, amen and amen. Greetings, Bazalone, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mfundisi. Thank you, Mam Fundisi, and the leadership for affording me this time uh, to share the word of offering. My topic is offering that yields the result. I will read Second uh, Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 14, but for the interest of time, we only read um, verse 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shuman, where there was a noble woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was often as he passed by, he would turn there to eat some food. The story of a Shumanite woman who went an extra mile to accommodate the man of God. She asked her husband to build up an upper room for Elijah, the prophet of God. When Elijah came there, seeing what the Shumanite woman had done for him, an act of kindness, he called Gehazi and said, go and check what can be done to this woman. Gehazi said, she doesn't have a son. Her offering yielded the results of her having a child. The offering of this woman did not benefit Elijah only, but it also impacted the lives of the community, advancing the kingdom of God and transforming lives by the man of God having a place to stay in order to do the ministry work. The Bible says he used to come three times a year to do God's work. Remember, Bazalwan, this woman was wealthy. As Mfundis always says, there are situations and problems that cannot be solved by our money or our connection, but they need the intervention of God only. Her act of kindness towards a man of God resulted her having a child which her wealthy could not deliver to her. May our giving impact the communities, transform lives, and advance the kingdom of God on earth. The word of God says, let us not get weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. But Zolani, God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring other believers as you still do according to his word, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, may we pray. Lord, we thank you as we come and offer into your kingdom. 
Lord, your word says you are not a man to lie or a son of man to repent. Your promises are yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. You bless the mighty God. We thank you that this offering will yield the result. We thank you that you are the God who give us more than what we ask. We give you honor and glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I am yearning to hear more from God through all his faithful servants. Tomorrow, we'll be indulging the word and partaking in Holy Communion. Please join us as we tap into the blessings and benefits that come through the body and blood of Christ as they are paramount to our spiritual prosperity. In preparation for our Sunday celebration service, please gather your bread and juice ahead of the final offering of Alignment Online Conference 2020. Tune in on HOD Family Church platforms, Facebook and YouTube, as we gather virtually around the table from 9 a.m. Thank you for tuning in. Good night and be blessed.
declare effectively we are saying what God has already said about us. Uh, and declarations vary. There are declarations that are focus on our identity, which is an identity that is uh, in Christ and in the Word. So, so, so the role that declaration plays, one, it ensures that our language is collaborating with what heaven expects of us to speak. And yeah. two, uh, you know, declarations are important in a sense that they are carriers of life. I think we must, you know, recognize the fact that we do go through setbacks in our lives. And those setbacks are valid. Those setbacks, those challenges, those oppositions are real. And, 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 and it's important that uh, we kind of register that. And what's also important is the fact that, as we often say, uh, the struggles are real, uh, but more real is our victory in Christ Jesus. So part of what would help us in additional tips over and above filling our hearts with the word of God would be be mindful about the things that we see. Because the more we see danger, the more we see things that are, are fearful, the more we see and hear things that uh, saying, you know, we are going under, those things will fill our hearts. And before we know it, that will become the language uh, of the things that we, or the words uh, that we that we speak. No one slides into greatness. Let's take responsibility. You know, we know when we, we know when we, when we brush our teeth, we know when we uh, drive to work or, you know, we know when we, when we have to have lunch, we know when we, so some of the routines that we can take are uh, to say, you know, before I get into before I get into work, this is a minute that I spend, and in this minute, this are the I am statements that I say. Always make sure that you are never too early for your next level. Oh! You know, uh, and, and 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 what that always, what that means? It, it, it actually means, uh, oh, the, the way I can kind of try challenge this focus on focus on building who you are because the next level of your life whether in business or whether in career or in any aspect or area of, of our lives is found in the next version or in the best version of ourselves <sighs> that you have a long list for with all the qualities that you have put in as the things that you want is a man that is actually married because somebody has actually taken the time to work on the guy and therefore you see an upgraded version of Mr. Right. The man that you are waiting for will probably come as a potential guy. One of the challenges around loneliness that it can result into being or a state where you live in worry or live in depression and 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 probably the you know you know you know the cure for that is to stay hopeful and not allow hopelessness uh, to kind of slide in into your into your into your life be a good steward of the now master the arts of being in the now be 100 percent there and do it well don't succumb to the pleasures sometimes the devil will use people to ask you questions so that you get into haste and not wait for the right person maybe the waiting is not necessarily the waiting maybe the waiting is because god is hiding you because quality takes time Quality take time. And when you relate at an interdependence level, it's that you know that you are whole, you are complete, but you choose to live your life with someone else. So it becomes important that you make the choice. In this season, particularly when you are single, there's a lot of benefit about being single. One of them is just making sure that you prepare yourself. I mean, these days I'm so consumed about the fact that let me try not to follow on things but invest in developing and building myself so the truth is it's always important not to uh you know not to go shopping while you are hungry because you would know that actually this is not my right size shoe uh, but you like it so much you it's like i can't i can't wait for another week you buy it you wait once 
at least it's a hit. Can you give it to someone else? 